Hello, so let's discuss physics paper 2, May June 2021, paper 2, variant 1. Let's start with question number 1. Before we proceed, uh, I would like to make a request that all the new visitors do subscribe my channel so that you can watch my latest videos in time. Thank you. Let's start with question number 1. So question number 1a says define density that is mass per unit volume. Let's move on to part b. It says that figure 1.1 shows a solid pyramid with a square base. The pyramid density p mass m height h. The mass m of the pyramid is given by m equals 1 by 3 e h x square where uh, density rho is the density of the material of the pyramid h is the height x is the length of each side of the base measurements are taken as shown in table 1.1 calculate the absolute uncertainty in length x we are given with the fractional uncertainty in length x so we can uh, write up the formula now what we can do is make absolute uncertainty the change in x subject of the formula so from here x the value is given as 4 centimeter so our absolute uncertainty change in x becomes point plus minus point 0.2 centimeter part 2 says that the density rho is calculated from the measurements in table 1.1 cal determine the percentage uncertainty in the calculated value of p so the formula for density is so from this formula we can calculate the absolute uncertainty by adding the uncertain uh, percentage uncertainties of m h and two times the uh, percentage uncertainty of x so let's write down the expression now let's simply plug in the values for the percentage uncertainties given in the above table so this turns out to be 16 percent so part c says that the square base of the pyramid in b rests on a horizontal surface on a bench use data from table 1.1 to calculate the average force of the pyramid on the surface of the bench the uncertainty in your answer is not required so we just need to uh, see for the formula pressure equals force over area where force is the weight and that is mg so just write down the formula and plug in the values plug in the values for mass which is 19.5 into 10 to the power negative 3 g is 9.81 and the area of the square which is 4 into 10 to the power negative 2 whole square do bear in mind to convert the uh, calculations to kilogram and meters so our final final answer is 120 pascals question number two says that a person uses a trolley to move suitcase at an airport the total mass of the trolley and the suitcase is 72 kgs the person pushes the trolley and the suitcases along a horizontal surface with a constant speed so constant speed means equilibrium of 1.5 meters per second and then releases the trolley the released that released trolley moves in a straight line and comes to rest assume that the total constant resistive force of 18 newton opposes the motion of the trolley and the suitcase calculate the power required to overcome the total resistive force on the trolley and the suitcase when they move with a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second so we need to find the power we are given with the force and we are given with the velocity so just use the formula power equals force into velocity just plug in the value for the force which is the opposing force 18 newton and the velocity is 1.4 meters per second so the answer is 25 watt it asks to calculate the time taken for the trolley to come to rest after it is released so we are already given with the initial velocity u which is 1.4 we are given with the final velocity which is 0 and we need to find acceleration 
and after that we would get our time so we can find acceleration from up after applying the formula f equals ma so just plug in the values that's an opposing force so i have used a negative sign over here so our acceleration would be negative 18 over 72 which would be negative 0.25 meters per second square just plug in the value of acceleration in the equation of motions v equals u plus 80 make t the subject of this equation so that would become 5.6 seconds so that is our required answer Part B says that at another place in the airport, the trolley and the suitcase are on a slope as shown in figure 2.1. The person releases the trolley from rest at point X and the trolley moves down the slope in a straight line towards point Y. The distance along the slope between X and Y is 9.5 meters. The component F of the weight of the trolley and the suitcase to X on the slope is 54 newton. Assuming that the total resistive force is 18 newton, opposes the motion of the trolley and the suitcase. Part 1 says that calculate the speed of the trolley at point Y. In order to find the speed, we need to apply the formula V square minus U square equals 2AS. We are given with initial speed as 0. So in order to find V, we need to make V the subject which becomes square root of 2AS. We, are, we do not know acceleration, so we need to find acceleration from F equals to MA. Forward force minus, minus the frictional force equals MA. So this makes up E as 0.5 meters per second square. Just plug in the values of E and S to find the velocity. We are already given with the displacement. So our velocity becomes 3.1 meters per second. The speed. So part 2 says that calculate the work done by f the forward force for the movement of the trolley from x to y so the work done is w equals the forward force multiplied by the distance the forward force is 54 and the distance is 9.4 so let's multiply them we would get 510 joules Part 3 says the trolley is released at point x at time t is equal to 0 on figure 2.2. Sketch a graph to show the variation with time t of the work done by the force f of the movement from the trolley to x to y. Numerical values of the work done or t are not required. Let's analyze the formula s equals to ut plus half at square. Initial velocity is 0, so the equation reduces to now multiplying f on both sides of the equation. This makes work done equals half F80 square. So we can conclude from this equation that work done is directly proportional to the time square. So what we can say that this would be a parabolic curve just like this. Part C says the angle of the slope in B is constant. The frictional force acting on the wheels of the moving trolley are also constant. Explained why in practice it is incorrect to assume that the total resistive force opposing the motion of the trolley in the suitcase is constant as the trolley moves between X and Y. That is because of uncontrolled variables. So what we can say that as the speed increases down the slope, the air resistance increases. So that's it for this video. Do subscribe my channel, uh, especially the newcomers, the new viewers, uh, so that I can make more good content for you. And if you want me to make any specific video, you can. You are welcome to comment in the comment box. Thank you.